Dan was a piece of history waiting to happen because we, that is disabled people, are denied the most basic human and civil rights. We cannot get mainstream education. We cannot get jobs. Many of us cannot even vote because polling stations are often not accessible. Since 1982, 14 bills that have promised civil rights have been rejected by government. The situation is so desperate that we formed DAN, the Direct Action Network of Disabled People. The proposed legislation of this government only advises against discrimination. It can't and won't work. These are extracts from Dan's diary of 1995. It's been a busy year. It's been part of a collection of like-minded people who are, who are really, really angry. We're not heroes, we're not heroines, we're, not, we're definitely not looking for martyrs. The thing I like, I think, about Dan is that it's in your face. And what disabled people are doing is, is going out in a totally public way and breaking down all the ideas, or a lot of the ideas, that float round about us. The sort of thing that makes Dan different is that we spent about a year setting up a network. Um, so that activists, people who wanted to get on the streets, people who wanted to, to do the sort of things that Dan does now, could be in touch with each other and also be supported and that we could sort of talk to each other and learn from each other about how we can do that. The message of Dan is that we, what we want is just what everyone else has got already, which is just basic the basic rights to actually access public transport, to access shops, services, to go to work and not be discriminated against. It's an organisation of disabled people which believes in fighting for the rights of disabled people using non-violent civil disobedience. February the 9th, Westminster. A lobby of Parliament to support the Harry Barnes Bill, a private member's bill that guarantees full civil rights. general public actually gets to supporting us in a, in a really concrete way by pressurising the government, by making sure we get our legislation, then, you know, that's when it stops. When accessible buses are going to be always accessible, all of them, and there's a plan, that's when we can stop doing this. Twist Mr Bridge underneath a bus. And what have you done to the bus? Uh, I've just chained myself to it with a handcuff. Um, yeah, as I say, I feel sorry for these people having to come out in this kind of weather to demonstrate for equal rights. I think as British sub subjects, they should be given equal rights no matter what their status. What do we want? Civil rights! What do we want them now? That's the only way we're going to get the legislation that we need. It means that we can live the lives that we need to live. The government's disability discrimination bill says nothing about transport, it says nothing about access, and it's totally unenforceable. It's a con, and we're not having it. We've been waiting for 13 years for this to go through, and what the government has been putting forward goes nowhere near getting our, our real rights. The right to use buses, the right to be able to live a normal civil life without a hassle and without the able body treating us like shit.
Can you just put petitions in and things like that now? <laughs> Nightclubbing, I want to go to restaurants, I want to go to the cinema without being a, a fire risk. And I have to map my life around being a fire risk or being inaccessible to places. I can't go there, I can't get up the steps, or I can't go there because I can only get there by underground. And I stay at home, look at the walls. you made your point that you've had your protest but you can't stay here all day do you understand get out of the road we're extremely angry we are not weak and we will never be seen as weak again that's why we're right there we want to show people that we have been angry a long time but because we're disabled no. We are not going to be seen as no. weak people. We've no. been passive long enough. No. Now is the time. No. We're now being stopped uh, from lobbying RMP by, uh, by the police, which is uh, interesting in terms of civil liberties, isn't it? We have to ramp in the back room for disabled people. We're picking them up all day long, sort of thing. So, like, they're right again. Plus, if they can pay 13 million for Churchill's papers, I'm sure they can give these people a few quid as well for that. What do we want? Civil rights! When do we want them? Yeah. What do we want? Civil rights! When do we want them? Do we want want them? <laughs> what do we want? We want what they've got! We want! Didn't even I didn't have any civil rights. You know, I just thought you was born with civil rights and I didn't know you had to scream at members of parliament for it. When mum takes a shop and that, I can't go, because I can't go on the bus, jump on the bus. If we go by taxi, that's another seven quid and that's a packet of nappies. So I don't go shopping with them and things like that, you know. I get excluded from a lot of her life. I don't enjoy actions always. I mean, I just sort of, you know, I wake up in the morning of an action and I get a big knot in my guts and I, so I think perhaps if I don't get up this morning, nobody will notice, you know. <laughs> and it's it's really hard. I mean, I find it really hard sometimes. You know, I don't, I mean, I don't want to be arrested and I don't want to sort of go into some stinking cell and, you know, don't, and take the risks that we take. But I've got a child, I've got, a, you know, I've got work to do. Like, I've got a house to run. I mean, I've just got loads of...